Encore une fois. Staying home for more than six months. <laughs> that was the biggest difference. <laughs> Being in the same place for an extended period of time, that was quite, quite an experience. I hadn't done that in six or seven years. All I want is the best for us. This one was a little more introspective, I, I, you could say. No, it's actually, it's, it's a good point. It was, it was an attempt at a, a kind of maturity. I said it all these years the sound has been right in front of me and I've been doing it and I just didn't really I just didn't really recognize it the way I did this time around. And so there was maturity at least in in, in just deciding to pursue what I do best, what we do best, instead of what I really want to do. That's a hard one. See I struggle well, I struggle to explain it, first of all. But more importantly than that, what I'm really struggling for in the actual songwriting is to create something, you know, decently timeless. I don't want it to be part of any genre in particular. I don't want it to be part of any scene, any decade. I want it to be classic in some sort of way. So it's really hard to explain. I mean, what I end up, what I end up doing most of the time is literally just explaining the instruments involved. As far as like, you know, when I'm trying to explain to maybe a family member or something like that, what do you do? Uh, I do ukulele, accordion, trumpet, upright bass, and drums. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to explain, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. I assume it's all right. I wish no, I, in some way, I, I prefer, I prefer being the front of a small group. I consider that to be the best way for me to work. I've, I can't, hmm, Owen is talented. I don't know if I could work the loop machines like that. What's to say if all the days I can't? It used to be studio all the time. Um, in fact, that was the only thing I was comfortable with for years. But the live show has really crept up on me in, in an interesting way. And we've had such exciting shows over the years in so many strange places around the world that it's become, it's become a very tangible thing. You just, yeah, at this point, I don't know how long I could live without it. Oh, trust me, that was a strange phone call. Although it wasn't really a phone call, it was actually Chris Stein, the guitar player, who had, we had been emailing back and forth for a couple of years now, actually. And then he kind of came out of the blue and told me, uh, by the way, we're, co we're covering Sunday Smile for the new record. Oh, wow, okay. I actually, um, I actually went up and recorded with him. In, uh, in Woodstock, New York. That's actually, yeah, it's funny. The most recent record I bought was a Jane Birkin reissue. Um, yeah, no, I'm, obviously I'm obsessed. <laughs> I do kind of like to see some of the bigger labels kind of shake in their boots because they have no idea what to do with the, with the kids these days, you know? <laughs> it's like, how did the internet become sort of some sort of musical revolution? I really have no, nothing negative to say about downloading. I feel like, I feel like fans have been really good to us as far as like actually buying records and but I'd, I'd much rather people just came to the shows and liked the music when it comes down to it. So I have no qualms with the, the whole internet era of music that we're going through right now.